Joining me now is former White House Chief of Staff and Senior Advisor at Bondi Partners, Mick Mulvaney. Mick, great to have you back on the program here. Four more years, pause. Um, look, I know we talk about this sort of thing pretty often, but what is going on here with the president that even an auto cue seems to be defeating him? Yeah, James, I'm not sure if the uh, if the Ron Burgundy movie Anchorman was a big hit in Australia or not, but it's being referred to here as the Ron Burgundy moment in that movie. Yeah. Uh, the lead character was famous for reading literally everything on a teleprompter, and that's where we are now with, with Joe Biden. It didn't go well, as you can imagine. It will be spoofed on many comedy shows over the course of the last couple of uh, the next couple nights. And it's just more indication, more fodder for those who are worrying about whether or not Joe Biden has the mental capacity and ability to do the job. There was a, um, a program here over the week um, that did a side by side of President Biden just the last couple of days and President Biden um, during the election of 2020. And the man is clearly, clearly not the same as he was just a couple of years ago. No, I mean, I think you're right. I was looking at a speech that he gave in 2019, and it's just a completely different person. But in terms of the media treatment, if any Republican was having these sorts of problems on a regular basis, I mean, the New York Times would be in meltdown. They'd be talking about invoking the Constitution to get the vice president, you know, in. I guess it's because you got Kamala Harris here as insurance. But I mean, the media at some point is going to have to start talking about these sorts of things. Or is this protection racket by CNN, The Washington Post, The New York Times so strong that they just ignore it. Yeah, your example is not wrong, and it's not hyperbolic. I remember when I was in the White House with President Trump, he gave a speech one day and um, slipped for just a second going down a wet ramp. And the headline on the of the New York Times the next day was whether or not he was mentally fit for office and should we have a dis national discussion about replacing him as being unfit for office. Here's what here, your question is a good one. Is it, is it a protection racket? This is Trump derangement syndrome. It's essentially anything that prevents Donald Trump from becoming president is seen by many on the left, including many in media, as a good thing. The ends justify the means. Anything that prevents Donald Trump from winning re-election is a good to these people. Uh, and that's what you're that's what you're going to see. It doesn't surprise us. If you complain about the double standard in American media, that's all you're going to do is complain, because if there was not a double standard, there'd be no standard. It's not going to change. But the American public is seeing it again and again and again. And it's one of the fundamental reasons that Joe Biden continues to struggle in the polls. Yeah. Now, let's talk about, though, this other attempt to take down Donald Trump, which is this hush money trial in New York. Um, the judge, who people have said has links to the Democrats, uh, has said that Trump was losing credibility. His lawyers were losing credibility in their arguments that the president shouldn't be punished for violating a gag order in the case. Where is this case up to? What are the politics of this here? This is what I'm very curious about. How is this playing out, or is this just simply something that's grist for the Trump derangement syndrome people? It's a little bit of, of all of the above. Keep in mind, um, this is not a, a, a case about hush money payments um, to an alleged prostitute or, or an adult film star. This mm. is about how those payments were booked by the Trump organization. Were they mislabeled as business expenses? Were they really campaign-related expenses um, in regards to his 2016 uh, election for, for president? And thus, should they have been shown as a federal election expense? This is a bookkeeping case once you put all the salacious sort of information aside. It is by far, James, by far the weakest of all the cases against Donald Trump. When these uh, charges were announced, I think it's just over a year ago now, keep in mind that even Democrats had to come to Trump's, many Democrats came to Trump's defense and said, this, this looks like it's politically motivated. None of that has changed. Mm -hmm. um, is it Donald Trump? A little bit. It's keeping him off the campaign trail. Is it helping Donald Trump? A little bit. It does give him a wonderful sort of platform every single day when he walks out of the courtroom and the press is there waiting for him to speak. So uh, it is cutting both ways. He's going to soldier through and it. My guess is we've got another two weeks before this one's over. Yeah. And I mean, just on this whole thing, it does keep him stuck in New York. And now that means he's not on the campaign trail. He said he's going to try and win in New York State. Have a listen to this. And we're going to make a play for New York. It's, they said, I just heard there was a very good poll came out. To look. Normally, a Democrat will win New York. Biden is the worst president in history, and we have some very bad people here, but we have the greatest people, and they're right behind me. And they all want us to run, and we're going to, we're going to run very hard in New York.
And Mick, he's being cheered all over the place where he does go. Have a listen to this. many Trump supporters in Manhattan at four, five, six in the morning. Does that surprise you? No, absolutely not. Now, obviously, those are construction workers. They're going to have politics maybe different to your typical sort of Upper East Sider. But, Mick, I mean, is there any chance that he could start to make some lemons out of this lemonade of being stuck in Manhattan? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> you asked this question. Like, answer. No Republican presidential campaign is going to win New York. Um, in all seriousness, no, back in 2020, the very beginning of 2020, before COVID and when the Democrats were looking like they were going to nominate uh, Bernie Sanders, we did have some polling data that said New Jersey could be in play. New Jersey is a state that is also heavily Democratic. We never had any data in our wildest dreams that would, that would put New York into play. So I, I hear what Donald Trump is saying. It's the right thing to say. My guess is um, his campaign is, is, is saying, Donald, say whatever you want to. We're not spending any time or any money in New York that we don't have to. We're going to Michigan and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and Arizona because those are where the election are going to be won and lost. And finally, Mick, just on this other case here, the one for the Supreme Court around immunity for ex-presidents, it does sound in the last few hours like the Supreme Court is going to wind up giving some immunity to former presidents. Is this going to wind up being a big win for Trump and a shutdown to the lawfare that they've been pushing on him? Probably not. Here's what's going on. Here's the issue. Is, is a president totally immune um, mm. forever? Um, and I, I don't think that can be the result. A president can't, for example, kill somebody 10 years after he's out of office and then not face uh, justice for that. My guess is, it's an educated guess, we've been watching it very closely here in the last 24 hours with the arguments today in the Supreme Court, is that the Supreme Court's gonna draw a line and say, look, mm. anything that's related to the job of president while you're in press, while you're in office, you can't be sued for that. You can't sue George Bush for invading Iraq and for weapons of mass destruction. You can't sue Joe Biden for this um, for the student loan uh, debacle. At, you know, after they're out of office. But if you do something outside of office or outside of your role as president, think of Nixon uh, as a mm. candidate breaking the uh, Democrat National Committee. Then you should be sued for that. My guess is that's what this case is about. Where do you draw the line? I don't know. We'll know the answer to that for several months. Well, we'll see. Mick Mulvaney, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time.